began. You're a proper engineer. You make cars powered by hydrogen. It's not just you, is it? I show JCB there, run by Anthony Bamford, one of our leading industrialists. He's a, also a huge hydrogen convert. So why are we all talking about fracking more hydrocarbons when you, Anthony Bamford, other leading cutting-edge industrialists are talking about, no, we don't need oil and gas. We can use electrolysis to generate hydrogen, which can be used to power our transport and heavy machinery. Well, we clearly need a transition, and there's going to be some oil and gas involved in that transition. But in the long run, even the BPs of this world have acknowledged the fact that we've got to stop burning it. Hydrocarbons are terribly useful, as Catherine is saying, and we need them for all sorts of things. But uh, burning them is not one of them. Blowing capital is a very important form of natural capital. We need it for all sorts of other things. Uh, we have amazing uh, renewable resources here, and... Um, uh, we need to be investing in renewable sources. They are long-term investments. If we invest in any interim solution, it's going to have to be written off sooner or later. And uh, rather, than, uh, apart from the fact it's, it's going to be a short-term investment, we also, it also distracts all that investment that should be gained from renewable energy into that short-term solution. The Labour Party today may be sensing that a fracking moratorium lifting is going to happen soon. They've brought out some numbers saying that within the, the new windfall tax legislation, there are, of course, tax breaks for energy exploration, uh, and that could include fracking with super deductions, meaning that investment in fracking, for every 100 quid you invest, you get 91 pounds back from the tax man. Are you getting those sort of subsidies within the hydrogen sector. Anything approaching that, Hugo, given the long-term potential of hydrogen? Not in slightest, no. Um, there's, uh, so far, there's Why been... Why is that? Well, the, the, the rules and the policy tend to be, be written by those with the deepest lobbying pockets. And, of course, the industry is very powerful. Um, making... Uh, fracking is an extension of the same business model by the, the, the same uh, entities uh, using their existing assets. And so it's only natural that they will lobby for those uh, for further investment and subsidy for those uh, activities. And yet, Hugo, we're seeing pictures here of JCB. You know, the big the people listening on the radio, the mm. big 360 radio JCBs, heavy yeah. kit. You yes. can use hydrogen technology, can't you, Absolutely. to drive ships if you convert the hydrogen to clean ammonia. You know, you, you are one of the... Britain's leading scientists on this. Why isn't hydrogen getting those subsidies? Well, I, I, as, as I say, I mean, it's uh, the policy at the moment is really quite simplistic about, uh, about how we're going to transition. And we need to have a much more grown-up conversation about uh, the, the, the real mix of, of sources of energy. People, politicians especially, like single silver bullet solutions. And this is an easy silver bullet solution to understand because it doesn't require any change of behaviour or uh, any uh, uh, write-off of assets or existing uh, industries. Whereas a renewable world is going to be populated by different companies, different technologies, different skills, mm. and uh, uh, unfortunately those industries don't exist, don't have the lobbying power at the moment that the incumbents have. And as I said, the incumbents write the policy.